Last year Poundland started doing these little lights that are basically it's a sort of crackle glass finish but then it's sort of stained as well with colour and a sort of mottled between sort of like brown to sort of yellow colour and in the past I've converted them by removing the cold white LEDs and putting warm white LEDs in because it really suited these but this year 2016 they've introduced new ones which have like blue glass and yellow glass they've also got other ones with uh, yellow and uh, I think they've got the red glass as well but I thought it'd be quite interesting to get the blue and green ones which are fitted at the moment with cold white LEDs and swap in, in just a couple of them actual blue LEDs and green LEDs to see if it makes them look much brighter because at the moment when they're using the white light it's using uh, subtractive filtering it just blocks the wavelengths that aren't needed so theoretically it should be more efficient but is it actually going to look that way? There's only one way to find out. So initially, let's take a look at these with the automatic exposure on. And at the moment, they're all fairly well matched. Um, so I'm going to convert one uh, with the LED right now. I'm going to put the green LED in, say, this one. And then I'll just pause momentarily while I do the same thing with the blue one and then we'll compare them side by side and see if it makes any visual difference in intensity. I'm not sure how well that will show up in the camera. It may be that they just look the same intensity in the camera but I'll tell you what they look like uh, visually to the to the human eye. So here's the inside. It's the us fairly usual arrangement. It's got a little circuit board there with one screw holding it in and the little button cell. And once again, you know, these things cost a pound, and what you're getting for your pound is oh, lots and lots of glue, apparently. Right, let's uh, get that glue off of the bottom. I've, they've glued a wire down. There we go. Uh, you're getting the a, a little nickel metal hydride cell, and you're getting the chip, the little booster chip, and the inductor. The LED in a solar panel, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's actually just worth buying these for the components. So I'm going to start by removing the existing LED, which is the cold white LED. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm simply going to place the solder iron across its two contacts. I'm going to check first the negative end it goes up towards the chip. So I'm just going to melt both those contacts simultaneously and pull the LED out. Then I'm going to flow just a little tiny bit of solder onto those connections before using desoldering wick to actually clean them off. Some people say, why don't I use the desoldering pump? And I do have various desoldering tools, including desoldering pumps, but I just kind of prefer the desoldering wick. It's very, if you get good wick, it's very clean. And strangely enough, this stuff is called Goot Wick, G-O-O-T. Wick, it's available online uh, on eBay quite cheaply. It seems to be very common. It seems to be like one of the standard Chinese products. So it's basically a copper braid with a uh, flux in it. And when you place it on top of a solder joint and heat it, it melts the solder through the braid. And then because the braid is it acts like a, sort of, well, it's wick, that's what they call it. It basically wicks the solder into it once it's hot, and it leaves very clean pads and clears the holes. Very good for single-sided boards. Not so great for double-sided boards, because the solder, as always with them, tends to get stuck down inside of the, um, the holes, the plated through holes. And you have to apply other techniques or use the vacuum desoldering pumps. So the original LED had two bits of heat shrink sleeving. I'm just going to reuse that heat shrink sleeving, which has shrunk rather predictably when it was soldered. And they're just using that as a sort of crude spacer. And I'm going to put that, it is actually marked. One of the bits of sleeve has just dropped off. It is actually marked in the PCB, but if it hadn't been marked, I would have remembered because the negative side of the LED points towards the chip. So I'm going to solder one of those connections now and then line the LED up. So I'm going to solder that connection. Straighten the LED up a little bit. and then solder the other connection before using 
a pair of snips to trim the leads off. Now, do I use the posh ones or do I use... I think for this application I'll just use the cheap generic Chinese snips. Because uh, they're just handy to have around. And also these are steel leads on the LEDs, which is always a wee bit tougher. I'm being over overprotective of my Xeron snips. So that's the LED in position now, so I'm going to put it back into place in the, the uh, housing. And this is where it's worth noting that the LED, because the LED is just off centre, they, they usually just stuff it over at an angle uh, and then screw it in because this casing is clearly designed for different types of batteries, uh, for bigger batteries, for places that actually have sunshine, unlike Britain, which doesn't have much sunshine. So uh, let's see if I can actually uh, get the screw back into that hole. Over here, all we need is a small battery because that's how much sunshine we get in a day. That's it's that bad. It's not like Nevada or other places like that or Perth in Australia or other places that have just oodles of sunshine all the time. But you're welcome to it. You can keep your sunshine. I'm quite happy in our sort of, shall we say, a temperate climate with lots of rain. Hail today, which was ridiculous for so late in April. So um, I'm just going to stick this battery in here, which uh, it's just going to have to flap around loose, I'm afraid, and then put the cover back on. Now, there is a little indent in this case, which is designed to line up with a little recess in there, just to make sure this goes on the right way around. So I'm going to try and line that up now. And stuff everything inside. Let's give it a wee test. Yep, that's uh, lighting up nice and green. You'll see the LED is sticking across at a weird angle, and this is how they usually come. Uh, because literally in the factory they've just shoved the circuit board in, and the LED ends up sticking at that weird angle. And uh, it means that the light is very lopsided, all the light fires out one side of it. So even if you don't change the LEDs in it, it's worth just getting that LED and straightening it up. Like this. See, that's all it took, and now it's going to spread the light out in all directions. So that's uh, that one done. I'm just going to pause and do the blue one, and then I'll be back in a moment, and we'll uh, do the dark test on them and see how they compare. Okay, the deed has been done, the new LEDs have been fitted in, and they're turned on, and that's us ready to compare them and see how they look. So let's uh, give that a go right now. And visually, how does it look in the camera? It, oh, it looks... It doesn't even look as good in the camera as it looks here looking at it. These two look washed out, as they, they always do with the white LED. These are super saturated colours. This looks such a deep, psychedelic blue, and this is such a bright, vivid green. And it's really catching, it's really making the glass glint. Oh, I really like the blue one. Uh, the green one's the brightest, but the blue one is just such a deep, psychedelic colour. It's really working nicely in the glass. So the white ones, you know, they're okay. Uh, when you look at the reflection down the way, it does look kind of white and sparkly. But um, I'm thinking that the hack, the modification to put the coloured LEDs in that match the colour of the glass, has improved these greatly. So that is a good result, I think. So now I think I'm going to end up putting... I'm going to put the LEDs in these as well. In the yellow one... Is that the yellow one there? Yep, the yellow one. I'll, I'll turn the light back off again, in fact. I Earlier on, I stuck a warm white LED in the yellow one because it just uh, it just makes it look so much better. I, it's probably brighter than if I'd used an actual yellow LED, but the warm white it complements the actual the yellow of the glass, so more light actually comes through than came through the cold white. But, um, yeah, these are very, very easy to modify and hack and adjust. So, um, yep, that's, that's a good result. I'm going to do the other two LEDs now. Yep, good result.